Our journey across Slovenia and Croatia continues in episode 5. We've traveled by car from Turin, Italy, across Slovenia and then south into Croatia, a 2,500 km journey. In the previous episodes, we've been to Rovinj, Zadar, Split and the southern beaches. Now, in this final episode, we're going to the beautiful island of Var. To get to the island, we took a ferry from Split to Stary Grad, the island's second largest town. A two-hour navigation trip that costs around 80 euros each way for the two of us plus our car. Var Island is 68 kilometers long and only 10.5 kilometers at its widest point. Its strategic location at the center of the Adriatic sailing routes has long made this island an important base for commanding trade up and down the Adriatic, across to Italy and throughout the wider Mediterranean. The island promotes itself as a sunniest spot in Europe, with over 2,715 hours of sunlight in an average year. Its hillsides are covered in pine forests, with vineyards, olive groves, fruit orchards and lavender fields in the agricultural areas. The narrow and gloomy Pitvi tunnel in Gvar runs from the Yelsa district to Zavala on the opposite side of the island. The one-lane tunnel was built by the military by drilling through rock in the early 1960s. It's a 1.4 adrenaline rush with a width of only 2.3 meters. It is tight and dark, but after you threw it, you'll feel like you've arrived in paradise. Var has a very mild Mediterranean climate, several beaches and Mediterranean vegetation that make it one of the most attractive tourist centers in Europe. With a few small beautiful beaches and a handful of bars and restaurants, Ivan Dolak is the perfect place for a relaxing beach holiday away from the hectic nightlife of the town of Var. Local wine, olive oil, sun-dried figs and honey are produced in the surrounding area and may be bought at the local market. The Vartel Bar is ideal for a morning coffee or a refreshing drink after a day at the beach. A friendly and relaxed atmosphere combined with a spectacular seafront view make this a must visit for everyone in town.
we went to Zavala to visit a local couple who made wine and olive oil to buy straight from them. And after several tastings, we purchased a few bottles to take home. Excellent wines and wonderful olive oil, all from their own orchards and vineyards. Their wines had been awarded many international prizes in numerous competitions, but at the moment they were struggling a bit because of a work accident he suffered while working on the vineyard. We thought that by buying a few bottles we could contribute for them to have a better day. Even the dog was happy to see us. So if you go to Zavala, stop by and they'll be happy to sample you with some great wines and olive oil. At night, we went for dinner to a local restaurant run by a young local couple called Rot, R-O-T. An open-air restaurant that offers only local grown food, local wines and grilled meat and fish harvested in the surroundings. Definitely worth visiting. A dinner for two with a whole grilled fish for each, two or three side dishes and a bottle of wine will cost you about 30 to 35 euros per person. The next morning we drove into Var and took a water taxi to the nearby islands. The Pakleni Islands are a series of islands just in front of the town of Var. However, we did not have much time and only visited the nearest ones, which are not the best ones. I recommend that you set aside at least half a day to go snorkeling and swimming to the most stunning offshore islands. Var has a long and illustrious history as an Adriatic trading and cultural hub. It was an important naval station with a formidable castle above, enclosing the town walls and guarding the harbour from the 13th century to the 18th century as part of the Venetian Empire. By the 19th century, the port of Var was no longer a military post and the towns and islands' economies shifted. Today, the town includes a wide range of hotels, restaurants, galleries, museums, and archaeological collections. The port of Var, set in the lovely natural harbor with the Pakleni Island group to the south, provides a secure shelter for boats all year round. During the summer months, the town is a renowned port of coal for yachts cruising across the Adriatic. What makes it unique and why is it a popular travel destination? Its rich history, outstanding gastronomy, vibrant nightlife and breathtaking landscape draw both worldwide celebrities and regular travelers. I can hear the sound of violins long before it begins Make the thrill as only you know how Sway me smooth, sway me now
Croatia. We love the fact that you may comfortably drive into any town, any part of Croatia's rugged coast and discover a stunning town, a beach or a viewpoint. The country has so much to offer visitors that it's difficult not to have a good time driving or sailing along the coastline. Today is our final day of the trip and we are already planning our next trip next summer to continue discovering the wonders of this nation. For the time being, our journey is coming to an end. We've done our best to share our experience with all of you through our five episodes, but it's far from enough to see everything this beautiful land has to offer. We are now returning to Split, where we will board an 11-hour ferry to Ancona in Italy. From Ancona, we still have to travel 600 kilometers north to our home in Turin, a total of 2,500 kilometers in 15 days. This has been a fantastic journey. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. It costs you nothing and it helps us a lot to continue creating travel videos like this one. This is Mark from Go Travel Planet signing off and really hoping to see you again on our next adventure. Until then. Ciao, alla prossima!